reactive and use these think tanks and these pro bono organizations to do studies before things can be a problem. And the reason why I ask that is I'm thinking about uh, 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 students forum that was over at um, David Axelrod's pet project, which is the uh, Institute of Politics, University of Chicago. And they were having a discussion about why the beverage tax fee. And Boykin canceled the day before. I didn't know this until I got there, but he, Boykin, he canceled the day before. So the people that were there that were on the pro tax side took that as an advantage to try to make this case that it was all about big soda and the people that spoke up against it, even down to us grassroots like Linda, um, um, were paid off by Big Soda. And I took about as much of it as I could until finally I jumped in and said, I hope that you all are going to open this up to discussion of other people besides your party. Because I can tell you, I didn't get one red cent the times I went before the county board. I said, Linda did not get one red cent. Sometimes. But, and, and I should add that they had a, um, a political strategist who's out of Berkeley, and one of the things he said to his credit, out of all the others, was the biggest problem that we had in trying to fight repeal is it was not about health in Cook County. No, it was right. about the money. Yes. Come on, that, that's right. true. I didn't and, like and that. that. I wanted to punch but this was about, but this was recognized yeah, was by someone way. outside of Cook County. Well, the people inside that were for the tax yeah, just couldn't deal with that, with the exception of Preckwinkle, to her to her um, credit, did say on WB, or her on WBBM say, the health stuff is ancillary, it's really the money comes first. But it took her a long time yeah. to get yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Only after yeah. all the, the, yeah. the, the yeah. response yeah. from the people. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that gets to the crux of the matter of why I'm running. We need people who simply will tell us the truth. That's all. Be honest. We need revenue. This is an idea. This is what we'd like to do to get revenue. Okay, now let's put it in the arena of ideas. Let's discuss it. Let's see. Maybe you come up with something else. Uh, I have theories on why they ignored the gasoline tax, which would have been much better, uh, because I advocate putting a little bit higher tax on diesel fuel as compared to the gasoline that we buy if we're going to go that route to raise funds, but that involves construction companies, trucking companies, unions who support all these incumbents. That's where they get a lot of their money. And I'm not anti-union. I belong to three different unions in the course of my political, I mean, my, uh, my personal life. And I'm not anti-union, anti but the unions currently have a really tight death grip on the county. Yeah. And they get whatever they want. We're in a dire financial strait, and yet Frank Rico gives the union employees a nice big raise, <laughs> but kind of ignores some of the other workers who don't have a strong union. That's not right, that's not fair. And let's be real here, most of the union employees don't look like us. You know, I know from personal experience how hard it is for us to get on construction sites. I advocated, I worked, I fought to get people on construction sites in the third ward. On the phone constantly, making deals, trying to make deals. They don't look like us, but that's who they're and that reacting to. That was the big to. argument with this incentive, uh, with this um, prevailing wage uh, amendment that they want for the, um, for the um, Tax incentive. They were like, you know, the, the, the black mayors that turned out managers were saying, and were, and, were, and, were, and, were, and were telling them point blank, including Tabowski, who sponsored this thing and who is a mayor himself, that you don't see us in these trades that are being that say they're being they be shortchanged by this thing anyway. So what are you guys going to do to make changes so that we are included? No answer that question. And, and let me share this with everybody. I think I told you this earlier. The county is protecting these union workers who don't necessarily look like us by padding budgets, having people in situations and jobs that maybe no longer are needed. Again, I looked into the budget. I've been looking at the budget. We took, talk about Oak Forest. Oak Forest Hospital, which is now just a clinic, a lot of buildings are empty out there. They have four 
painters, I'm sorry, four carpenters on staff making, and I may have this reversed, so bear with me. They have four carpenters or painters <coughs> on staff making $378,000 a year, and it's just a clinic out there. They have either five carpenters making almost $400,000 a year. I'd like to know what's going on out there, what's being built, what's being painted, where these are line items in their budget. And it sounds like from those papers, from just efficient quotes, that they'll make prevailing wage as well. I'm sorry. And above union scale. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm calling for an independent, comprehensive audit of the health system to find things like that, to find some of those people I got laid off for going to the Inspector General for. Maybe they're still there. Maybe that's where the waste is. Maybe that's where the fraud is. But we don't know if we don't look. And right now, they're not interested in looking. You know, in 20, when Stroger died, you had the movement of the had a brief window of accountability yep. in the county system, and I really do hope for that things were going to change. There were many suggestions that were made that if